Are you a skinner, a slicer, or dicer, or a corpse humper? Mm. Hello and welcome to the final podcast, the last podcast you'll ever listen to. Your final bros are here. It's Brian Hopper Lagrassa and Shane. I got circumcised this year. Smith. <laughs> We're joined by Mike G, who's who's back on the final pod again. Hi. Welcome back. Just, welcome are back. here every week. Yeah, it just won't go away. Maddie oh, Slice, our producer, we're back. It's the Matt's cruise back. here. Matt, he, I back. mean, he's back. Where, where'd you go? How was that break, kid? It, it was good. I went to uh, went to Maryland. Maryland. What were you doing when we called you last time? Playing some beer pong. Mm. Uh, you, bu- you guys buy that? I wish I would answer. I ain't buying it. I ain't yes, buying it. He was gone for what? Like three weeks? Five weeks? Three oh, weeks? Oh, four yeah. weeks? A long game of beer pong. Huh? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. You deserve the break, but... It's time to get to work. <laughs> and you do it again, I'll beat you to oblivion. <laughs> what a better comeback movie, though, than Vicious Fun, the movie we're recording You guys recording ready to today? Vicious Fun? Yeah. Or yeah. Vicious Fun, uh, I think it's on Shudder. You can watch it on mm-hmm. Shudder. Shudder a Ridge? Shudder a Ridge. For sure. Got some cut water. Yeah, we got the espresso martini cut water. We're all today. deep into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, oh that, that sip kind of burned. <laughs> You know what I'm saying by that? You guys ever just want to have, like, vicious fun? Yeah. You know what my idea of vicious fun is? Is it poisoning an entire Guatemalan village? No. Oh. (laughs) Yo, poison? (laughs) Poison is wild, bro. Crazy. That's my idea of fun. Mm, Just vicious. Ricening a village. (laughs) Ricening, I like that. Yeah, that's what we're calling it. Ricening. Did That's, you miss that I took my socks off? I'm ignoring it. Oh, you are. You yeah. let the puppos out. What are you saying about my feet? I'm saying I'm ignoring them. Do you enjoy them? No. No one should. I think some people do. <laughs> if you've never listened to the final podcast before, well, you're in for a treat. Because what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a movie. We walk through one every single week. A horror movie, of course. Uh, spoilers abound. Mm-hmm. We'll give our reviews and then follow up with the best kill of the movie. It's a fun time. And we're usually sober. Normally, <laughs> normally it depends. What we episode are right we're now, but that'll change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got a dog mounting me. Mm-hmm. He looks so happy. Yeah, so. yeah, good time, good Is, time. I think the dog's having some vicious fun. That's yeah. true. I mean, that dog. I look at him. Corpse humper. He's definitely a corpse. What about that game, Damn. Corpse Killer? Remember that we played of that course, shit. Of course, the best game on the 3DO. Yeah, because that game came out for like 3DO, like Sega 32X yeah. or. CD See, or some one shit. One of those, yeah. Great game. You ever Wild. play Corpse Killer? I played Tetris. Okay. That's not what we were asking. Castlevania. So, Mike, if Great. you had to be a slicer, a, a dicer, dicer, a gun guy, or like a corpse humper, what are you choosing? I like humping, but not dead stuff. You're not into the necro. You're not, no. into the, you're not the necro. I you know ever I watch like- Necromantic? Have I? Was that on list two? It was on list two. But then I've seen it. We finished that list totally. <laughs> We should maybe review that not for next year's fucked up February, but maybe for the following year's fucked up February. You have something to say, Snoopy? Oh, Snoop's mounting you too. He will hump you. He will hump your Shane, living how's that? body. Your ear lick. Did you enjoy that? Oh, oh yep. Oh, oh no. no. Oh jeez. No, no, oh no. Oh, oh no. yeah. Let Shane just let it happen. Let yeah, it happen. We're not gonna let that happen. There's dogs here. There's dogs here. Is we're Shane all a corpse? Dogs. <laughs> I'm like, this there you go, Matt. Bump the dog. There you go, Matt. Snoopy. I, Day. He's getting excited. He is. Oh, he just excited. he loves vicious fun. Oh, I mean, oh I no. that. we're back. It's, it's definitely a it's a it's a it's an interesting movie for sure. It's a fun ride. What uh, the fuck? These comedy doing, horror <laughs> movies, you know, they're hit and miss. But this is a good one. You ain't getting nowhere over there. What's happening? <laughs> you know what, Snoopy? Tell the people what we're gonna do next. Are we gonna jump into the spooky pit, Snoopy? Is that what we're doing? Do you guys want to do some dog ASMR? Mmm. And with that said, we're yeah. jumping into the spooky pit. <laughs> Was that the right one? Yep. <laughs> Vicious Fun released in 2020. Ever find yourself trapped in a support group for serial killers? I right? sure have. <laughs> How about that? Directed by Cody Callahan, stars Evan Marsh, Amber Goldfarb, Ari Millen, Julian Richings, Robert Millette, Sean... Bayek and David Koshner. He found his way into this film. Always does. He's always a pleasure. We'll isn't talk he? about him in a f- like couple of weeks. Yeah, again. a few weeks again. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. It's <laughs> always popping up. All right. So vicious fun. This is the story all about how my life got turned upside down because I was a horror journalist and I end up in a support group for serial killers. I see what you did there at the beginning and I liked it. Thank you. It's it, it's how do you find yourself in this position first of all? Okay, you so just have to be super weird. You got to be weirdly obsessed with your roommate who's like getting catching like stray dick on the side. Yeah. And then you got to f- follow the stray dick <laughs> to a Chinese bar. <laughs> 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 and then get like op- like open a tab. <laughs> yeah. And then have a guy put his shit on your tab and then pass out and wake up and boom. So here's my question, and we'll get into the the. We walk through this in very vicious detail. I kind of is, just, I speed around. Is that. this guy the opening kill? Is this Phil? Yes. That's Phil. That is. Phil. Yeah, I might assume this is Phil. Yeah. Yes, got it. So yeah, guess we'll mention the opening kill. We open with a girl in a phone booth. You think she's the innocent victim of this all thing there's an old creepy guy named phil he's stalking her ask her for a ride kind of does that smirk that that serial killer smirk and, and locks the sh- doors dude yeah locks the doors and then she dices him up with a switchblade well she he thinks he wants to, he wants to get off on that feeling of yes. terror like she's helpless she can't get out she's trapped and now she he's she's just got a submit to him just absolutely torturing her. It's a shame it's not going to go that way for him, though. No, like I said, she has the upper hand. She has the switchblade. She carves him up. She He's dead. And now we're like, so is the serial killer hunted by a serial killer? Mm. You know what's funny about that? He, like, uh, packs up, like, a bag of... Like, serial killer. It's like a Dexter vibe. Yeah. And then he twitches his eye a lot. Do you notice that? He oh, does. I twitch. She does this thing with a switchblade, and I'm just like, "What the fuck?" But uh, yeah, that's the open. That's the uh, the yeah, open. This was a good. It was a good cold open. It was fun. So we move on now to our the uh, roommate, the guy roommate, Joel. He's interviewing a horror director. He's asking him some questions. He's basically just destroying his film projects. Yes. And then we're going to find out this guy's kind of like a loser. He is roommates with this girl. He's in love with her. She just likes everyone else that isn't him. That's true. Including real estate agents. Dentists. Dentists. Lawyers. Special agents. Yeah. <laughs> She's into chameleons. Yeah, that's for, so, that's for um, sure. When he's talking to this dude, his uh, the original name is not Vicious. Uh, Fanatics is the original name. Fanatics. And that, that director guy's like, Vicious, fun. It's better. Yeah. And I agree with him. Yeah. He changes the magazine at the end. Right? Right. He steals his idea and yeah. shit. <laughs> so this guy, he's, you know, he's back at his apartment. He's asking his roommate what she's doing. She's having a friend come over. They're going to watch some movies. It's girls night. They're having girls a girls night. night. But he's going out and he's going to hang out with Denise, Susan, Carol, all made up names that he's just throwing out there that are girls that he's going to hang out yeah, with. Yeah, because, I mean, like, this guy's just getting so much pussy, right? Yeah, he gets all the pussy. Which uh, is, He gets so much pussy, this is why he has to follow the guy back to the Chinese bar. He's, he's trying to pick up black some car. or something. So, quick question. Yep. Um, is So, he wants this girl, right? And he thinks the way to her heart is that he's fucking a lot of girls. <laughs> Uh, apparently, <laughs> is that the way to uh, do it uh, now? <laughs> apparently, like ma- trying to make other people feel jealous is the way to get girls. But the reality is, I think they could probably see right through that. Oh, definitely. This so guy, his, this guy clearly his, isn't getting any. Girls. His thought is like, if I'm with like with like ten girls, I'll be like just as desirable to this girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like Catherine. June. <laughs> he actually does a good job. I would say, like, I think this character is way, like, the character profile is, like, way overkill, right? Like, yes. You see this, like, in so many movies. I feel like this was, like, a Michael Sarah, Jesse Eisenberg mm-hmm. kind of deal. But for, like, his first, like, role, I mean, I think he does it well. And it, he is funny, at least in my opinion. I, I, thought, know, I, I thought he was very he's funny. Good. What year did this come out? Uh, 2020. And he's never been in anything? He's, no, he's been in a couple of like, things, but nothing like notable, really? Yeah, Matt, give us a look on Evan Marsh in a star. Oh, and finally, it, we're putting the kid to yeah, work. Yeah, in a starring role, because I've only seen him as like like a, like an extra or like in guest. Like he was in Shazam. Spots. 
as that's killer. Uh, he wasn't Shazam. That's Zachary Levi. Oh, uh, he was in Burke Briar. Uh, I don't know if that's a main character or not. But I don't think it is. You could check. I I don't even think that's a real movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm I'm yeah. I don't I don't think. But um, man. so he's gonna follow this guy to the bar, right? His his whole thing is he has his tape recorder. He's gonna go talk to this guy and he's gonna get dirt on him. He's gonna prove to Sarah Sarah. Right? Yeah, that's the roommate's name. That he's not all that. This guy, he's, he's a liar, and he's gonna start asking. He's like, "Oh, you're married." Yeah, and he sees the wedding ring on him when he's talking to him at the bar. It's like, "Ah, oh, no, I just wear that." You'd be you'd be surprised how many people buy real estate if they think you're married. <laughs> I believe him. Yeah, I mean that seems believable. He's like, Bob Neese. <laughs> you're gonna love Bob Neese with his slicked back, feathered blonde hair. Yeah, Jane, do you remember when me and Bri were talking about going into the, like the storage business together? Yes, it's a great business. That was tight. Yeah. You guys should have. It boomed. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere now. Probably would have like multi millions of dollars if you guys did. Yeah, we blew it. Yeah, it's a real shame. Bob Neese would have did it. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. He's you know, Bob Neese is honestly hilarious. He's up. There. It's either my first or favorite, uh, second favorite part of the entire movie. Yeah, I think he's my favorite character. Yeah, uh, I think he's just super funny. Um, he's basically Patrick Bateman. To describe him, because he even wears like the raincoat that like Patrick Bateman wears. Yeah, and he he yeah. put he puts on like the FBI coat. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I just like I love his dialogue with with, with Joel here, and and Joel's just trying to ask him questions about what he's just done. He's like, I went out with this girl. He basically bad mouths the girl. Like it's yeah. it's just like typical douchebag stuff, but yeah. it's super funny. Yeah, he keeps saying how it's like, oh yeah, she had this like loser roommate, complete <laughs> yeah. loser, but. I, he's just doing that authentically. You'll find out that he actually had no idea that. that yes. Like, so when I was watching this for the first time, I thought that he might have been just like fucking with him, mm-hmm. figuring out that he must be the loser roommate. Yeah. But he actually doesn't pick up on that. No. Not till he eventually does because he finds his license later on. Yeah. He's like, that fucking guy? Who's that guy? And apparently, like, the background of this movie, like, Bob Neese is like the serial killer is like supposedly like super smart. Yeah. Apparently, he's got like an IQ of 180 or something they dropped, <laughs> which I don't even know. I don't know if it's possible. I guess it is. I guess. I mean, I think serial killers, for the most part, are smart, right? Probably. Like a thing? Yeah, I think that's a thing. That thing? Serial killer? Yeah, Ed, Ed Gein? Mm. I thought Ed Gein was the opposite. I thought he was super, the dumb one. Super. He's like fucking Einstein. I thought that... It, you're, you're mixing him up with Ted Bundy. You're the one that knows about this shit. That's not true. It's a little... I think they're all like, decently <laughs> smart. I, I mean, I don't think that, like, Jeffrey Dahmer was a genius, but he was smart enough to go to college. Yeah, he, he was... A, his dad was a chemist. Oh. His dad gave him a chemistry set. You know what he did with that? He tortured animals. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Yeah, you know, he was a good guy. Uh, sure. Love Budweiser, right? He did. He did. So, moving on. Uh, they get super drunk. Uh, Joel's going to go to the phone to, like call his roommate and say like i forgot what he's gonna tell her on the phone basically like he just yells at the phone yeah. <laughs> he yells, but he yells and says that he doesn't need her or cause, yes because she asked if he wanted to get picked up and everything and said, <laughs> Yo, I, don't need you. I love throughout this movie when he talks to sarah on the phone he just yells at the top <laughs> of his <laughs> lungs <laughs> so he's gonna throw up on this phone completely breaking the phone he's then gonna crawl into a storage closet and pass out yeah. Like it's uh, a different take on Hostel where <laughs> friggin' uh, Paxton passes out in the closet to save his life. For sure. I do like the cuts in this movie. I, I actually yes. love I love this like montage of him at the restaurant just drinking. <laughs> All the drinks. Incredible. <laughs> Super. Just like the camera's painted in on his face every time. <laughs> the faces he makes while drinking some of these is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Bro, he would be annihilated. He would yeah. probably get alcohol poisoning. He's drinking fucking so much. He does also run into Carrie for the first time when he goes to the uh he like, he, like, attempts a hookup and then just decides to throw up on the phone instead. Yeah. So when he wakes up, he stumbles upon a meeting. It's a meeting of the minds. It's uh in the basement of, like, a fucking Chinese restaurant. Yes. And at first, the way they're talking... He thinks this is like a, I, I, I assume he's thinking this is like a self-help group, right? For alcoholics or like something like that. Yeah. And they're probably just doing it in the middle of the night. Like what, and like, that's the thing. Like he, he's like kind of stumbles upon it. They're asking him questions or saying, Hey, you must be Phil. And he kind of just like lives that role. Yes. But then he's going to quickly regret it because they're going to put him right in this spot. They introduce each other, everybody. And they're basically telling him, uh, to, you know, thanks for coming out, Phil. And let's hear like what's going on. You got the floor. 
Joel is trying to let the other people lead him into the conversation to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Smart by him. But Zachary's kind of like, no, no, like you have the floor. Let's talk. We're not going to talk. This is your time. Let's hear what you have to say. And then he just like says like he's in a, he's in he has an addiction. Yeah. And, and that he can't overcome it. And they're like, well, and that's like, fucking vague. Yeah. Spo- they, they like, they're like, okay, but he's addicted to the kill. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler though. Carrie must have known that he's not Phil immediately. Right? Yes. Because she knows, because she, she, killed she, knows Phil. she killed Phil. Yes. Uh, that, I think if you look in her book later. Yeah, like Phil's, Phil's crossed, crossed off. Right. She knows yeah. Phil. She likes she likes <laughs> Phil. That's why I think she keeps staring at him in this scene because she's trying to figure out who this guy actually like, what's is. What's his motive? What he's doing yeah. here? Because they know exactly who is supposed to be there. It's a select group of people. Yeah. And so you kind of get uh, like uh, background on all of them, right? Yeah, you get yeah. They, they kind of like go around and kind of like describe who everybody is and like, well, she explains it to him later on. Yes, but you kind of see a little bit of like the pieces of how they kill. Yeah, they talk about their like best kill or whatever. Yes, like the fucking ricin and Fritz is how he like drugs them and kills them slow over time. He's brutal. He's, Fritz is scary. He's probably the most brutal because I think what he said is he he like drugs them and then kills them to the point where like he slowly kills them, revitalizes them, and then like keeps going through this process. Yes. It's like right. fucking crazy. Um, tall Mike over here. Mm-hmm. He likes college chicks. Yeah, he's just he's just hacking. He. I feel like Tall Mike is supposed to be literally like a realistic Jason Voorhees. No yeah. joke, that dude is like eight foot tall. Yeah, where he's just going and killing indiscriminately college co-eds with like a machete. Yeah. Also, isn't that guy, was he one of the people who played the mountain for a season of Game of Thrones? Tall Mike? He might have. I know he's definitely. Like not the last mountain, but. So he, uh, he's also, you're going to also remember him from uh, Monster Brawl. He was played with Frankenstein. Yeah, he played Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. Tall Mike he's, all, he's also in year one. He's actually in a lot of movies. Yeah, he, actually, a lot of the, besides, I don't know, Hideo was the. Is, is he, yeah, is he also in uh, Becky? He is. He's Apex. Yeah. Matt, is he in he's fucking Apex. Becky? <laughs> I, I that I even look up. I remember he's Apex. I asked you a question. Is he in back? In- <laughs> <laughs> I expect an answer fucking two seconds ago. <laughs> Let's kill him. And then uh, uh, Matt. Yeah. Like I'm all for beating him, but like Jesus, Shane, Mike, you never want to have some fun. Just Ooh. kill our producer. Oh my God, Matt, do you feel safe? <laughs> Matt, is this a safe space for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you did this. I didn't do shit. You did this. I mean, I, I threatened to beat him to oblivion before. <laughs> That's so pretty much killing him. I, I but kinda, he would have survived it. <laughs> I kind of love these characters, how they're talking about, like, he just hacks up college girls. The one guy takes his victims and kills them slowly. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got a cannibal in the group, yeah? And you have one guy who waits in crawl spaces for like 48 hours on a time before yeah. he just decides to eat their liver. Yeah, that's uh, his name was Hideo, right? Yeah. And then we got a clown. Well, um, that's Fritz. Fritzy boy. <laughs> we don't learn yet that he dresses up as a no. clown. And they're like, why? He's like, he just likes being a clown. Yeah, I hate him. Mike, he's incredible. He's also three finger. Yep. And then did they cut three fingers? They cut two, so he had three left. They should have just cut the third. Mm-mm. Consistency, Shane. No, Mike, no, that's not how this works. You think tall Mike gets typecasted just because he's like fucking 8, 12? Yes. Yes. He does. Yeah. It's, a, it's just like a kind of for a, him. He's made a fucking life out of being tall as fuck. Yeah, I know. I wish I could be tall and menacing. I would just do movies. Cool. Or, or like be like be, awesome. be like the twelfth man on a NBA team. Yeah, like uh, what was that guy on the Grizzlies? Uh, Hashim the Matt. Beat? Do a fact check on the Grizzlies. <laughs> <laughs> so Zachary was torturing, killing victims, and like well, his victims were tortured hmm. POWs. Yeah, he, right? he literally works for the government. Just. Killing people around the world. And he killed a ton of people, right? Yeah. Like, he's killing 200 people a pop. Like, he's slaughtering villages. That's yeah. a big number. And then, let's go into depth about, like, what how Phil explains his his fake killing style. Yeah, so he is a taxi cab driver. This, this is, the, is not the first time we've heard this. This was the story he pitched to the, to the horror director. Yes. And the horror director didn't like it. Yeah. What an ass. So he... he and he... It's that unsuspecting. Was the, he picks girls up at night. That was the plot of Big, Big Fat Liar. You remember that shit? Yes. Paul Giamatti, Frankie Muniz, Amanda Baez. Is Bynes. that her name? Bynes. 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 He's not Javier Baez. 
Do you remember? The, yeah. Yeah, no. I remember the plot of Big Fat Liar because he says he's not going to take their idea, but he's a big fat liar, so he takes it. Yeah, he makes tons of money off a teenager. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like Nickelodeon. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, was that movie actually about Amanda Bynes' time at Nickelodeon? Probably. She was probably pitching all kinds of ideas. She was. She was the top talent. Yeah. I've seen the Dan Schneider doc. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's talk about vicious fun. Eventually, the Patrick Bateman uh, guy, what's his name? I always forget. Uh, what's his uh, name? Bob Neese. Bob Neese. But he has a, does, does he just go by Bob the whole movie? I forgot. I think he does, so. I think. He does. Okay. So Bob's going to come in and he's going to be like, you're Phil? Because obviously he recognizes him from the conversations they were having. It's and Dave. Like, he remembers his name as Dave. He says yeah. his name is Dave. So he's like, you slicer, you dicer, you trash humper, you harmony corine. What's going on here? Whoa. And then he's starting to see some holes in the story. Very quickly because he says he's like, oh, I drive this cab. He's like, oh, well, do you report these to dispatch? Yeah. And because they, they would be able to trace, you know, you're a killer. This person would go missing dispatch. Which no. is a great point by him. Yeah. Big plot hole in uh, Phil's story. Yeah, and he this could just say stole a cab years ago. This is the '80s. There's no Uber. He can He could have probably led with like, oh, like I do this like for yeah. my own income. I have my own business, right? Where there would be no dispatch. Yes, but he didn't say that. Yeah, he said he reports the dispatch, which dead giveaway because then they would know he's the guy going and delivering the women. So the holes are being poked, and this is when they figure out this man ain't Phil. No. They look through his wallet. They see, obviously, he's not Phil. And now we got issues. And they need to kill this guy immediately. But I think it's Zachary's like, everyone slow down. We're going to let him leave. And then whoever I pick gets to hunt him. So this is a support group for serial killers. It's not to, it's not to like prevent them from killing. No. It's to do it in a very supportive environment. They're, trying, yes. they're all trying to get better <laughs> at their craft. Yes, they're all trying to do it where they won't get caught ever and they could kill as many people as possible. Question. If he doesn't announce himself as Phil like off jump, do they kill him right away? Probably. I don't know right away. I do still think Zachary would introduce the hunt. It may be the haunt, yeah. So they don't like Zachary's idea. So they're going to disembowel Zachary. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite kills in the movie. I think it's actually really funny. Yeah, it's, it, I, well, I, it's, it's interesting because Zachary actually shames them. Yes. He's like, I've killed way more people than you guys combined. He's like, kind of like talks down to them. He does. And then Mike, when his back is turned, basically takes him a shady and stabs him. Yes. They cut... They disembowel him because I think Hideo, right, cuts his, like, guts out. Cuts his guts out, and he tries to, like, take his intestines and put it back into yeah, it. Yes, <laughs> and then Fritz just throws a syringe into his eye to yeah. finish the job. So this is when Carrie's going to take Joel and throw him into the kitchen, and they're going to bar the kitchen closed. And this is when they you, – you, this is where you get the backstory on everyone, right? Yeah, well, because, like – Carrie comes with like a fucking axe and he's like, oh, you're going to kill me. But he actually, she actually just uses it to bar the door. Yes. She talks about how she's part of a secret society or organization that hunts down serial killers and kills them. And she's been spending months trying to infiltrate this circle. And now Joel has fucked it up. Yep. Um, one part of this, I didn't understand. Uh, there's like talk about like Utah or something. Yeah. That's one of the killers, I think, or yeah, something from Utah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that went totally over my head. Yeah, it's just someone was from Utah or something like that. The one like missing piece, and I maybe I'll mention this in my review, I feel like they never circle back on like the Mr. Midnight thing. They don't. I think it's just the, I, I think it was more so just her this quest, is what, her, her, her reasoning for doing, for doing it. For doing this. In the I mean, I guess that makes sense. You don't want to force in like a character that would have like nothing to do with the. Because yeah. she, she, I think she, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think she even says it. She doesn't even know if Mr. Midnight's alive. Live. She might have been someone she already killed. Yes. Yeah. But that's her reasoning for doing what she's doing. Yeah. So this scene right here, I was like, this is so Patrick Bateman coded. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> I hate this guy. is clearly oh, supposed to be Bateman. so good. It's so I love fucking this. good. <laughs> He's a coin like, me. He catches the coin with his head turned yeah, toward the it's, jukebox. Because, like, Pat Bateman, he wasn't a dancer. This guy's clearly a dancer. But, like, Bateman well, got off on the music. Yeah, well, this guy gets off on just the thrill. He literally is rock solid just pretending to be an FBI agent later it's, in the movie. Yeah. He does say that. I love, I love that. Whole, that whole police station scene. 
It's fucking it's great. great. You don't make fun of anyone with a mustache. <laughs> that dude is hilarious. We'll get to it. We will. All right. So obviously they're all going to start going into serial killer mode. Like Fritz is going to put on the clown makeup. Um, uh, Mike is going to put on the <laughs> pretty much like the coal miner outfit. <laughs> Dude, I just didn't even fucking realize. Yeah, I didn't catch that. That when I watched this before, <laughs> like, so he puts on the jukebox music to tell them he's like, I have a plan, and he's like whispering the plan to the serial killers. <laughs> so he's talking. He's like whispering to fucking. Uh, Julian Richie's yep. character. I forgot his name. Fritz. Fritz. And then he starts speaking Chinese to Hideo. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. How much you want to bet he knows like every language too? Oh, he does. He does. He does. He's just 180 IQ. So Hideo goes up. He puts on his like black phone mask and he goes up into the, um, the duct to like kind of climb into the kitchen He's Fritz, like, uh, like I said, puts on his clown makeup. He's going to sneak around back to get through the back entrance. Mm. And Mike is putting on his coal miner's outfit. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I like day he was just going up there for like a fucking camping trip. He's like, I'll see you guys in 48 hours. It's so funny. And he, he puts on the gloves and the Patrick Bateman like rain jacket. Yeah. When he has like, yeah. where he's like, hey, Paul. And he hits him with the right, axe. Right, right. Yeah, he's discovered his license. So now he knows who he is. Yep. License left behind. He knows him. He does cut off three fingers. You were right, Mike. He knows the address. He references the address. He knows he just had a date with Sarah at that address since they're roommates. He knows that this is definitely the guy he was talking to at the bar. This is the fucking loser roommate. This is him. So he's going to threaten to kill Sarah later on. But first, Hideo gets in there after uh, Fritz gets his three fingers cut off. Then Hideo's in there. They have a plan where Joel pretends he's dead with his intestines out because Hideo is just going to start licking them. And then that gives Carrie the opportunity to get up and choke out and kill Hideo with the intestines. Yeah. Also, in this scene, we see Phil's body in the freezer. Yes, because they... That's like he he goes in there because he <laughs> apparently he's dehydrated. So he Joel goes to suck, on, to suck on some ice and he's like sucking on like dead intestine ice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's got to give you a disease. What's cleaner, that ice or like ice at any fast food place that they get from like the toilet? I actually <laughs> say the the toilet ice. Something about dead serial killer intestine ice, I feel like might almost be as dirty as Flint, Michigan water. Oh, oh wow. my God. Shots at Flint. Matt, do a fact check on Flint. Yeah, <laughs> check up on Flint. Also check up on the fact that Carrie has choked out Hideo using um, Phil's intestines. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good kill. How would you describe her? Ray Ripley. Yeah. She gives me that vibe without like as many muscles, of course. She's kind of just, she's a badass. She's a fucking crazy. She's a psychotic killer. She is that too. So if you described her as like Ray Ripley, then like I want Ray to completely dominate me. Okay. So I'm kind of feeling like I want her to dominate me now. You want to be dominated by this female. By Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. She probably find out you're a serial killer and kill you. That's Did true. You say she's an antihero. She is an anti. She is an anti. Well, yeah, she's, yeah oper- she's an anti. She's operating on her own rules yes. outside, like outside the normal law. She's yeah, definitely so that, an anti-hero. Yeah, that is an anti-hero. What's this whole organ- organization? She's I don't even know if of. it's real. She, she might have just said that she to say it. Could have made the whole thing up. It's yeah. true. She could just be a, a vigilante, an anti-hero. Yeah. Did you ever pull a fire alarm at school? No. Me personally, I've done it like fourteen times. <laughs> you do realize that's a crime, right? <laughs> sometimes I just need to like put my arm on the wall and like stabilize myself. But sometimes I get a little <laughs> a little handsy, a little the handsy on off. the wall. So yeah, Joel's gonna pull the fire alarm, thinking that'll save the day. Instead, it's gonna cause problems because now uh, Bob is gonna go outside, call the police, say that the two that Joel and Carrie are murdering everyone inside. The police are gonna come and they're gonna instantly arrest them. And now Joel and Carrie are being sent to the police station and the three serial killers together are going to go to the, the police station and try to finish the job. And what does Carrie say? Carrie says that she'd rather deal with the cops than deal with serial killers. Yes. Even though she kills them, they're just easier to deal with. Yes. So these cops are literally the most stereotypical <laughs> 80s rendition of cops ever. I am watching Last House on the Left by... Uh, Wes Craven, I am watching Black Chris. Uh, no, no, Black Christmas had good cops. Um, yeah, they were on hunches, Shane. They did good, and that's all you need to do. Uh, nothing is more important than a hunch. That's a fact. 
But yeah, these cops are your stereotypical. We don't listen to anything you say. Great to what they do say does sound insane that they broke into a serial killer self-help group and that she works for a secret organization to take them down. I get why maybe they didn't believe that. It's not going to work. And I think Joel gets one phone call, right? He yes. gets one phone call to make and his one phone call is to Sarah and this is where he starts yelling in the phone again. <laughs> it's so funny. He's like, Bob Neese has tried to kill you. <laughs> He's like, I'm He's at like, the police station. Don't come here. <laughs> He's like, I was arrested because I'm with serial killers. <laughs> And, and we may have killed one <laughs> with my friend Carrie. <laughs> Say what you want about roommate girl. What's her name? Sarah. Sarah. She really cares about this she, kid. Oh, clearly, yeah, she does. She, she clearly does. does. When he calls her at the bar, she's willing to drop everything and go to the bar. When he yes. calls her at the police station, she's willing to drop everything and go get him at the police station. Yes. Find yourself a girl like Carrie is what I'm saying. You I hope Sarah? I have a strong wife one day. You mean Sarah? Yeah. <laughs> or Carrie, because Carrie will kill Find for you. Find yourself a Carrie, too. Find, yeah. yeah, you need that. Yeah, get so, a killer and get a loyal friend. <laughs> what, if, what if it's like a reverse psychology? What if she's saying that she's going to have people over just to make him jealous? But she does. She has a, the, a girl over. Yeah, she, she definitely have a, girl have a friend yeah. over. That's fair, Matt, but like she does have a friend over. Clearly, she cares about him. Yeah, I think the idea is that even though she cares about him, doesn't mean she has to have feelings for yeah. him. Because even Carrie says that to And him. I kind of think that's where this movie went. Yes. Like, I think she saw him as a friend and was happy that he's happy. I don't think it was ever going the route where, like, him and Sarah were a thing. Yes. Ever and, that, and that's why they show when he leaves with Carrie at the end of the movie, Sarah's happy for him. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't try to stop him. She's just happy that he seems happy. Yeah, yeah he, Which, like, makes peace that, like... It's not going to happen. Yeah. And then he's fine with that. And that's a good life lesson. Yeah. yeah. Enter Special Agent Jack Felder. Fuck yeah. I Special Agent Jack Felder is Bob Nice in disguise, and the police are <laughs> falling for it. I love he's so fucking good in this part. I, know, I love how, like, he's like, you guys can't buy his fucking fake mustache. It's so <laughs> terrible, too, but it's so believable. Bro, he looks like Johnny Depp. In like, um, oh, there's a movie where Johnny Depp's a detective and he has a mustache. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Tusk. Yes, he yeah. has that exact mustache. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the the guys like take it like personally. Yeah, like like don't you fucking make fun of the mustache? He's like, you don't make fun of a guy with a mustache. And They're not respecting the look. I, I also love. There's an ongoing joke where that one guy keeps reaching for his gun. <laughs> 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 oh my god yeah. so the police they go back to their thing and Bob's like I am so rock hard right now it's amazing so my rock. opinion as soon hard. as they go to this police station this movie like shoots to another level I I, I thought it was so consistent the whole way through like it is from the self help like, group to the hunt in the kitchen to the, I, even the hospital at the end like yeah this movie's really good <laughs> it really is so um this is when the other serial killers start to come in. And yeah, I think Fritz is first going to kill the cop at the front desk, right? He's going to drug him, put a little nail on top of his head and go. Yeah. And you see the blood just pool. It's kind of yeah. crazy. It is. It's a really good kill. I, I don't know why I found it so funny, but the cop was so funny. And then he just lets a serious note out. Yeah. <laughs> just mentioning he's like the only thing I care about in the world. It's like my, it's like my niece or my stepdaughter or some shit. I'm the only thing she's got in this world. And I'm like, yo, they did the stereotypical like family man about to retire guy yeah. is dead. It's like, just, it just came right when he's about to get killed too. It was like so perfectly uh, timed. Yeah, man. Doesn't fucking mention it any time before. He just drops it right then. I think it's his last line in the movie. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> oh god and he gets killed by mike right that one i think he gets killed by mike he yeah. gets killed like literally right after that scene happens yes so he's reading um the vicious fun magazine yeah that's cool. he's the one that gets yeah, killed he's by the one with the nail in the head um yeah so once he's dead i think mike just goes and kills the other cop like right after while this is going on, we will mention that Carrie is breaking joel out of jail yeah she's always got a plan yes and she tells joel to leave and that she'll do this on her own. But Sarah's also now gone into the police station. I love that she tries to go in the police station and it's locked. So she just look or like imagine trying to break into a police station. Yes. And so he'll go back into the police station because uh 
Yeah, Carrie's going to kill Mike in yeah. the police station. But then, uh, what's his name? Bob is going to get the upper hand, stab her in the back. But Joel came back for her, and Joel's going to pull her out of the police station. And I fucking love this because it goes off of what you've been saying with the phone the whole movie. Yeah. He's screaming at Sarah, drive the fucking car! And she's like, what? <laughs> you know, every movie has like a weird like downfall between the characters. Like There was like a weird time where... like. Uh, before I think she went on a killing spree of these killers and killed yep. Mike, she kind of like has an opportunity to throw uh, Joel outside the police station yes. and tells him not to come back. I feel like that's so short-lived because he does leave. He reunites with Sarah and he re- meets back goes up back with her. He, but it's more so, I feel he feels like obligated to help yeah. her since she had helped him so many times. For sure. And she didn't even question. She's like, you're back. And he's like, yep. He's like, and that was it. Yeah. Like now they're just going to like focus on killing the remaining serial killers. Yeah. Well, cause now after she had already killed the other two. Yeah. So now it's just Bob, but they're going to bring her to the hospital first. Cause she's been stabbed in the back. So they get to the hospital. Oh, another thing. Cause Bob was about to kill her, but he throws his arm out in the way and he gets stabbed through the arm. That happens right when he comes back. Yeah, right, right when he comes back is the opportunity for them to kill Bob niece. And he stabs her, like you mentioned, yep. pretty badly. And he's going to stab her and go for the kill. But he does stick his arm out, taking it. The knife is literally through his arm. Oh. But he does clock him in the head with yes. a pot. Don't they also hit him they with run a car? Him over. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the big thing. They literally clean well, him up. Bob ain't going down no, that Bob easy. Bob ain't going down that easy. So they get to the hospital. They get their wounds treated, which the scene where they're asking, they, they have to pull the knife out of his arm. He's like, it ain't going to hurt more than this. Is it? He's like, no, no. He fucking rips it out of his arm. <laughs> you know what's funny, too? Like, this movie, like, they're in the hospital. I'm like, there's literally nobody in the hospital. But, like, later on, like, I feel like when they're right when they're leaving, everyone's, everyone's there. there. So I was like, where... Where it's the it plays off of that fucking trope yeah. of the eighties where no Definitely. one's in the hot. It's the Halloween two effect. Also, yeah. the police station. There's three cops there. They that they do mention every other cops at the crime scene. In town, the every cop in town. <laughs> I know. Fair, it's, I know. Small, it's, I know. If it's, it's a late small at night, town, but. and there's three dead bodies at a Chinese yeah, food restaurant. Good you're gonna point. send a lot of people. Good point. But I guess also you're not leaving the two suspects with only three cops. <laughs> this dude's funny. This dude's funny. This scene was funny. It must be the eyeliner. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, Carrie. Uh, uh, so Bob is obviously going to show up at the hospital impersonating a doctor now. Of course. Well, he's the best damn doctor in the land. Paging Doctor Nice. No, I have Paging no, Doctor Nice. I, I have no doubt he's the best doctor in this facility. Oh, he's yeah. definitely smarter than most of these people. He's smarter than everyone in the world. <laughs> um, but. I think um, Joel finds out he's there because he sees his old outfit, right? He just opens a fucking random closet and sees all his bloody clothes. Mm, uh, <laughs> I think he follows like a blood trail, right? Yeah. Because Bob's bleeding. Yeah, and he's going to run to Carrie. He's going to... They're going to brutally murder... <laughs> uh, they're going to brutally murder Bob by stabbing him like 400 times. And oh. then they're going to stab him in the eye and Bob's going to pull his own eye out. I literally love that death scene so much. <laughs> he just stays it up t- for It so takes long. a lot to kill Bob. You know, yeah, Bob ain't going down easy. That high IQ goes into his bloodstream. Yeah. <laughs> you think that kept him alive longer? Yeah, the IQ points. Kind of like how Magic Johnson beat AIDS. Yeah, yeah. with with IQ and money. Yeah. <laughs> this whole theme of him like being able to handle killing and then like he can't, he just throws up all over the ready <laughs> dead dead I love it because now his DNA is like all over the I do crime love scene. it, yeah. Because he also he, I love that he just throws up on Bob. Yeah. Also, earlier his throw up like melted a phone. What do you think it did to Bob's face? <laughs> Are you saying he has acid? He's got up? acid puke. Kind of <laughs> like my we talked about it recently. I'm not gonna bring yeah. it up again. So your porn? Yeah. yeah. Mm, this yeah. movie Ends with them leaving the hospital as undercover, uh, a doctor and nurse or doctor and patient. They then cut to a couple, like a couple months later. He's got some sort of facial hair now. Yes. He can't grow that shit. He's incognito. Oh, coitus. Yes. Mm. And they go to a movie theater where the guy obviously has a woman tied up in the bathroom they're going to bury an axe in his head. They're going to save the woman. And now, obviously, we have our new pairing of Bonnie and Clyde it's killing serial killers. It's sexy. He's, he's the distraction. He's the intern. Yes. Like She always said, like, I could use an intern. Here we go. He cops some snacks for the road. He finds out that... Uh, he forgot the axe. 
also that this movie dude from the beginning stole his idea. He's like, I knew it was a good idea. Even though it's plastered right over the fucking Cineplex and has all the posters in the fucking building. His uh, magazine or whatever is in there. Yeah. He's he's big time. He's on top of the world. Big time. And you think you think eventually that they become like an item? Like uh, maybe. I mean, if you're just killing indiscriminately together for years, I'm sure there's some passion there. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I yeah. Don't, I don't think she's into it. You think she she's a lesbian? I d- it doesn't actually say at all, so no, I, okay. I don't know. Right, well. They never hinted at it. I was just throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. Anything's possible. That's what I do. I don't do it. So, so that was vicious fun. With that said, I'll go into my review. Sure. Fuck. I fucking love this movie. Uh, if you can't tell, we've done nothing but talk really well about it. Uh, I think the one thing with horror comedies is a lot of times with them, they start off funny, but then be, feel like they drag. I never felt that with this. I kind of agree. Like It either stayed consistent or got better as the time went on. So I, I really enjoyed the dynamic between the two leads. I absolutely loved the serial killers. I thought they were all funny in their own ways. Um, the kills in the movie were very well done, very good, very graphic at times. Um, obviously, we didn't talk about it enough, but the music, that yeah. 80s fucking synth vibe to it, I thought was great. So I'm going to give this movie a very strong 8 out of 10. Mm. Wow. You stole my thunder a little bit. I was going to bring up the soundtrack. I was going to be like, yo, I'm the first guy to talk about the music. And then you you fucking said it. Sorry. Oh, I want to beat your ass right now. Anyway, this movie's really good. The acting is good. The kills are good. Um, kind of like the title. It's a fun watch. Yeah. yeah. It's like viciously fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I was literally not for a second was ever bored with this movie. Yeah. It was quick. Um, yeah. I have no qual. Is that a word? Qualms. Qualms. No, I have no qualms about fact check qualms real quick. <laughs> <laughs> What's what a qualm? What does it mean? What does that shit mean? We got a nice little uh, credit scene here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to echo okay. your number score yep. by like a decent to strong eight. Okay. Almost a nine, honestly. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Brian. Yeah. Um, I really like this movie. This was my second watch and I, uh, it didn't like the rewatchability was there cause it, it it's pretty funny. Um, I have it a strong seven. I really yeah. enjoyed it. I definitely was struggle with like the seven or eight rating. Uh, why it's not higher than that for me, you know, it's 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 tough. Like I, I try to like think, what are my eights in terms of like horror comedies and like, do I place this on the cabin on the woods, Tucker and Dale level? I, I don't, but I I could see where like it's like very close. The characters are really good. The acting is really good. The music is really good. I, I really do like the way they shot the movie. I think it, was, it only took place in like four different settings in the entire movie, right? Like his apartment, the hospital, bar. The, the bar, and the police station. Like it, it was like four settings and they shot it like very well. But the biggest takeaway is it was entertaining and it was funny. And it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't get stale. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think they tied a lot of, tied up the movie pretty, pretty nicely. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I I have no qualms with that. I give it a strong seven. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Now let's talk Necro. All four of us are here, so if we have a tie, Matt's here to break it. I'm going right away because I already know who I wanted to pick, and I want to pick Bob Neese. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's Bob Neese or, or probably Zachary, but I could go Bob Neese because it was pretty funny at the end. Yep. Is uh, Zachary's... um. That's David. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to go with him. Okay. Matt, you either pick a winner or you tie it, and then we come down to a four-sided die. Mm. Um, Refresh my memory. How did Zach die again? Uh, he gets disemboweled, then he <laughs> Just, uh, gets cut, and then he gets a syringe thrown in his eye. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. I think uh, I think Bob. Three to one. I, I, think, I think it's yeah. just it's, – he's the main – Pretty much the main serial killer of it, and oh, he definitely is. is. Yeah. He's, you know, he's so good. It, it's a very he's, good kill. He's a great character. Overall, though. He's a great character. He really yeah, that's is. a good pick. I mean, it took a lot to like kill him. Final kill him. Yeah. So, all right. With that said, Bob Neese, the real estate agent, 
lawyer, dentist, FBI agent. You were a man of many talents. You were, you were the chameleon. You knew how to blend in. You knew how to get what people wanted. You also knew how to get the ladies. Am I right, guys? That's a fact. Because if there's one thing women love, it's a serial killer. And an asshole. I've That's been true. saying it That's for years. Fucking facts. Women love assholes and they love murder. That's true. It's really true. We never talked about how he kills on like the third date. Yeah. So how close was he to killing? Uh, uh, two dates away. But he was going to make an exception and kill Sarah on the second date. But that would have been breaking his rules. And serial killers don't break their rules. We all know that about them. Because I listen to podcasts. And for that reason, we're putting you in our Necronomicon. So there you are, Bob. You earned it, Bob. Proud of you, bud. This was a fun one. Yeah, it was. It is it's, it's, it just a fun movie. It's not deep. It's just fun, you know, like... Very surface level, but it's a good time. I'll tell you what, we're not getting deep next week, but we are going to talk about a good movie next week. We are going to talk about a movie we've wanted to talk about for a while. You're next. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Um, this is a movie that, I don't know, I feel like when it came out, I got like a lot of hype. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's, I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's like a true horror movie. It feels more like a thriller, but it's something I'm, it's something I'm very excited to to, to review, I think Adam Winger is a director. We've yeah. talked about him at length on this show. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pumped to review your next. Yeah, good old slash and fun. So with that said, we are the final podcast signing off, and we will see you next week because you're next. So did you say it because it's next? Yeah, you know, yeah, I still like really after nice. watching it for like the third time, I still don't understand the whole like your next concept. Me either. It actually, makes no sense. Yeah. Interesting movie though. Awesome. Well, if you haven't already, please ensure to subscribe to the YouTube page. It's growing. The final podcast will there. Always see all of our content at www.thefinalpodcast.com. But we always ask if you can, please give us the five star on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Leave us the comment on YouTube. It goes a long way. We really appreciate that. We'll see you next week for some uh, real slashing fun because we're rich white people. You're next. <laughs>